part five of our four loops series and we're going to be looking at nested loops which are loops inside of loops so what does that mean well let's go back to an example we did earlier in this video series if you haven't go back and check out the video on a prime example or basically a prime number so if you remember that video if you're not sure what that was algorithm or what it's going to be doing you go back to the previous video to go see what it's doing um, but I'll just give you a brief underline. If you remember, we were trying to count the factors of a number, count all the factors. And if there were two factors, we knew that it was a prime number. So we had a variable which was counting how many factors there were. We'd initialize it to zero. And then we looped from one until the number that we were checking. So if we want to check the number five, if it's a prime number, we check from one to five, all the numbers from one to five, one, two, three, four, five, check if all of those numbers are factors. Um, there won't be any factors bigger than the actual number, but all the numbers from one to that number. So one to five, check all the factors. And the way we checked it is checking if the R variable can be divided into that number without a remainder. remainder. So if I was having a five, I would check if a one can go into a five without a remainder. Yes, it can. Can a two go into a five without a remainder? No, it can't. Can a three? That type of idea. And every time we found a value that went into our num without a remainder, then we increased our count factor. In other words, we counted it as a factor, which means keeping track of how many factors our num has. And then at the end of the loop, we would check if our count is two after we've checked everything. Remember, this is after the loop. Then we knew we had a prime number and we could display our num. Hey, it's a prime number. There we go. So that's the algorithm that we used to find a prime number. Okay. So that basically displays our num if our num is a prime number. That's what I wanted. Okay. But there's only one loop there. So what does this nested loop mean? Well, what happens if I want to display all the prime numbers from 1 to 100? In other words, I would check 1 if it's a prime number and have to do this algorithm. Then I'll have to do two and use this algorithm to check if two has got prime numbers. And then I would do three and four and five. So I'm doing a loop from one to a hundred. And inside that loop, I'm doing this exact algorithm. So basically, this whole algorithm here, this whole prime example algorithm, I'm going to put a loop that goes from one to a hundred around it. And this is the, the best scenario or best suggestion I can give to you. If you're doing nested loops, get your inner loop working first. Get your inner calculation working properly for one case and then you can expand it to the outer loop which is this purple part around it that will apply that algorithm multiple times so in this case we don't have an r uh, looping variable we obviously can't use r because r is being used inside of my prime example algorithm there i'm going to use a j from one to a hundred and repeatedly do the prime example algorithm a hundred times now, there's a problem with that because our algorithm only worked out if our num was a prime number. I don't want to work out, let's say if our num was 5, I don't want to work out if 5 is a prime number a hundred times. I want to work out if 1 is a prime number, if 2 is a prime number, if 3 is a prime number, if 4 up until 100. So instead of checking our num every single time, what am I doing? I'm actually checking the for loop variable of my outer loop. I'm checking if j, j is going 1 two, three, up until 100. So maybe I should, instead of checking if our num is a prime number, I need to check if j is a prime number. And it will do that 100 times. So what's basically happening here is the outer loop, which is the j loop, will execute first. So j will become basically a 1. And then it will run everything that's inside the loop. It won't go to 2, it'll just it'll stay a 1. And it will run our count is a 0 loop from so the r loop will now be coming to effect and it'll loop from one to one which is just one the occurrence one to one check if if one is a factor yes it is does it have two factors no so it, it, it's not a prime number i think it i don't know if one is a prime number i'll double, double check that because it's technically one in itself it does follow that rule but it will run just once and when that loop when, when the 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 white the lighter colored code is finished it will then jump out of this to the, the J loop and J will go, are we at 100 yet? No, we're not. So J will now become a two and it will run through all of that code again, meaning restarting the I loop, the inner loop. So I will become a one again and this time it'll loop from one until two. So it'll go I is a one, 
high as a two and do what it needs to do. And when it reaches the end of the, the loop, it'll do what it needs to do at the end of the code and jump out of the white loop of the white code and go back to the J part of the outer loop and go, okay, J, we finished for J is two. Are we at 100 yet? No, we're not. So J will now become a three and reset R to one till J, which will be one to three. So R will become a one. We'll run the code for one. We'll run the code where I is a two. We'll run the code where I is a three and so on and so on. So this code is repeatedly doing it a hundred times. And every time it does it, R will reset from one to whatever the J value is and redo the inner loop. So that's why I say get the inner calculation working done, the, the lighter code, the inner loop, get that all working perfectly. And once you're happy with that, then you can put the outer loop around it to repeatedly do that code and make the adapt or adapt what values you need to. Just something to take note of. Did you notice that I count fact was initialized inside the outer loop? The reason we put it inside, if we initialized I count fact outside of the J loop, if we did before the J loop started, well, it would count, it would start off being a zero, but the, it would basically count the factors of every single number from one to a hundred. In other words, it would check all the factors of one and add them all together, then count again all the factors of two and add it on. It would never reset our count. So that's why we want to reset our count in side of the j loop because every time we are looking if let's say j is a three if i want to look at if three is a prime number i need to reset our count back to zero because that's how many factors we're starting with and check does three have any factors and so on so in this case we want to put our r count factors inside of the j loop so remember to initialize it inside the bigger loop okay so let's try to do this in our actual example Okay, so here's the code we had from our previous example. Um, we basically got a value from an input box and we set our count to zero and we went from one to whatever that number was, counting all the factors. And if the factor equals a two, I've adapted. We're just going to, dis if it is a prime number, basically we're going to display it in the memo control. That's all we basically do. So if I run the code, we're going to say, is it a prime number? If 53 is a prime number, the number will appear there. If it's not, it won't appear there. So 53, yes, it's a prime number. But if I put in the number 12, nothing gets displayed because it's not a prime number. There's no else part. Okay, so I just adapted it slightly. Okay, so that's the code that we want to do. Every time we find a prime number, display it. That's what we want to do. This is the algorithm. This over here. Okay, let's just mark, demarcate it off so we can see. This is the algorithm. That's the algorithm that finds out if num is a prime number. That's what it's doing. Let me just get some space here. Okay. So I want to repeatedly do this code a hundred times. So I want to put a for loop here for j equals one to a hundred. Begin and do all of this. Put my end over here and just so I know this is the end of the for loop. Which for loop? The J for loop. End of the J for loop. And this is the end of the R for loop. Okay, but there's a problem there. R it doesn't know what J is, so we must probably just make J an integer. Okay. Let's put a capital one so we can see. Okay. So we are repeatedly doing this code a hundred times. But we are not checking if 53 is a prime number 53 times because that's basically what it's going to do. It's going to check a 53 and it's going to put 153s here. That's what I think it's going to do. It's just put 153s. That's not what I want to do. I want to check if one, two, three. So I don't want to check our num every single time. I want to check one is a prime number, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. So instead of going till our num, I want to change that to a j, whatever the value of j was because do I have a variable that's going one, two, three, four, up down? Yes, I do. It's, it's the loop variable there. And that one, that, that I know must also be a J. And if we display our answer, we must display the answer J. So we actually don't even need I know. So let's run it. Boom, boom, boom. So is it a prime? Boom. There's all our prime numbers. So two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. Those are all the prime numbers from one to a hundred. And if we want to, we could count them. Now we spoke about this R count. I just want to show you what would happen if we put R count, 
outside of the jail, before the jail runs. What would happen then? Well, it would sound no prime numbers, there's none. Why? Because it would count all the factors for when J is a one, which means there's only one factor. J, if it's one, there's only one factor of one. And then it would go to J is a two. How many factors does two have? So let's just write this on the side. So one has one factor. Okay. Two will have two factors. Okay. And three will have two factors, one and one and three. Okay. Are you getting the idea? Let's do one more. And four will have one, two, and four. So it's got three factors. Okay. So if our count is a zero over here, it's going to work out, it's going to add on the one for the one factor for one. And when it goes back to a two, it doesn't reset our fact to zero. It stays a one. And so now when it works out two's factors, it's going to take that two and add it onto the one. It's going to, it's basically at the end, it's going to be three. And then after the three is calculated, it's going to be five. And after the four is calculated, it's going to be eight. It's basically going to add all the factors of all the numbers from one to a hundred, add it onto itself. So that is why whenever we go back to the new number that we are checking, we want to reset the number of factors back to zero because we don't want it to be influenced by the number of factors from the previous ones that we worked out. Because it's got nothing to do with this calculation. It's none of their business. So there we go. So that's how, why we put the algorithm in there, or the, the initialization inside here. So we reset it to zero every time we work out a new number's factors Okay, so there we go. There's the algorithm. That is nested for loops. That was the final video in this video series. You can go to our YouTube channel to find all the other videos in the series, as well as other content related to Delphi and computer-related information. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.